What's up, guys? FSC Trucking. You never guess who I got here. Well, maybe you will. Sorry I'm sweaty and uh, out of breath. I literally ran Looks from like filming ran, the Green Goblin truck. ran a marathon. Yeah, well, I know you You guys were from be here sharp, one, you know, one thirty. I'm like, all right, I got to get the inf info to do future filming with that truck. And I'm like, all right, got to run, got to run. I literally ran here. Wow. And uh, look at me. I don't look like I run very much. Yeah, no, man. Yeah, you're no, no. So long story short, boys and girls, I've been talking with Steve on air for probably going on 20 years, 20 years yeah. but this truck show was the first time I actually got to meet Jim first. Yes, yes. It's good to meet you again. Yes, we're, yes. And yeah, we're going to talk on this deep summer's overnight drive. Show. Absolutely. Yeah. See, I remember, most. some of you guys remember I did a live when he got this gig with Hot Shot Secrets that I did the live and I'm like, hey, stop watching me. Go over there and watch him. The first, and, uh, the first, the night, first night. night. The first night yep. I was on. That was, that was, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Because you had no idea I had this channel, and I this thing blew up out of nowhere. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I got to help out, help out a friend of mine. Because, man, you let me rant and rave. I always call it with the name Q-Ball. Obvious, right? <laughs> and you let me rant and rave for probably 20 years on air. Yeah, and yeah. I might have probably not, that might have not been the best for you. Yeah, well, but nonetheless, you land on your feet, here you are. You're doing better than ever. Doing great, yes. Awesome. Yes. And thank you for all you do. All right, so we're going to get the camera set up, sit down for uh, well, an interview. <laughs> Excellent. Can't wait for it. Let's get it on. Yeah. All right. I think I can. I think I can. We're back. Oh, my, my, my. Dude, what, what have you been doing? You, you run a marathon or something? Nothing short of it. <laughs> Cubo! How you going, Steve? Good to meet you, finally. Uh, getting uh, after how many, 20 years of talking here and there? And, Just about. I mean, you, Cubo, you'll, you'll call in once, and then uh, you might call in twice in a week, and then you might go two months. I mean, we'll say, well, whatever happened to Cubo? Yeah, well, I used to you know, call in very regularly, and then my life started changing, and to be honest, it, it had to. Um, Obviously, you know, still a full-time truck driver, um, owner-operator. I'm leased on with a smaller outfit out of uh, Wisconsin. But I started calling in back when I was uh, an owner-operator with a different company, still in Wisconsin. Uh -huh. I had my, my 99, 379 Pete back then. And, I, you know, just regular full-time driver. And then uh, I started trying to get a custom car shop off the ground. And I started a uh, YouTube channel to try to push the shop. Uh, long story short... The YouTube channel later took off, but not because of the shop. It took off because of the truck, and with the, with the uh, with the shop, I really wasn't driving full time anymore. I was trying to at least get maybe 50-50 so I could get primary custody of my sons. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea, and that's the time when my calling in dropped off. Right. I knew, I knew you were lunch. running some sort of a shop, yeah, right? A car car shop. Thing. Yep. Yeah, I started off as uh, uh, you know Fest Check Speed and Custom Shop, and it really went nowhere. The YouTube channel started taking off a little bit, but then when I put the 84 peed on instead of the, the old one Freightliner that I had, the YouTube channel decided I'm going to be a trucking channel because that's where everybody wanted to actually watch my content was with the truck. I, that totally was an accident. Yeah. So now you've got a, like, is it Fest Check? Fast Check? Fest Check. Fest Check. Yeah. So Fest Check shop or custom shop or something. Yeah. So the channel started as FSC Speed Shop and then it, because it was supposed to be for the shop. Then when it started tracking towards the trucking side of things, I just renamed it to FSC, FSC Trucking. Trucking. FSC meaning Fest Check Speed and Custom. That's where the initial came. And that's the one where you've got a lot of followers. Yep. Yes, sir. <laughs> a lot of people tuning in. Yep. And I had no idea that was actually going to happen, and certainly not in that direction. So that's how it started, and that's why I haven't been calling all that much because, you know, I, I drive probably nowadays 75% of the time. The rest is filming, editing, and just trying to be a good father with now full-grown sons so like we, we play with the toys like we got the razor and the jeeps and stuff like that and i told them around to where the boys want to meet up and stuff so that's kind of what we so do you're, are you considered like obviously you're driving truck oh, yeah. but you know, how much how much exposure does the youtube thing do for you uh it it doesn't help because i'm bear in mind i'm not my own motor carrier so i'm still leased on with a small outfit in wisconsin called okay. Meyer express they uh they get, if anything else, they get the drivers to see me pulling freight with an older truck. And there's a lot of drivers out there with older equipment that 
some of these bigger mega fleets, they'll never take them on with a truck that's 38 years old. But the way they look at it is if the truck is if legal, passes DOT, and it's a safe operating truck, um, a lot of, in my opinion also, is that older trucks well-maintained give you less maintenance problems than a newer truck does. You see issues with the DPF, yeah, and all these yeah. random sensors. Then you start running into supply chains, you get parts you can't get very easy. That becomes an issue for us. So if you have older equipment, you're losing the efficiency, but in the downtime you don't have and in the extra maintenance and cost you don't have, let's be honest, I don't have to clean my muffler out every so often, do I? Yeah, right. So so you're you're running a, you're, you're in a cab over, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's a cab over. I mean, they're, they're not that common anymore, are they? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, see what... The truck is an 84 Peterbilt 362. It's a 1984. Right. Hence Orwell from the book 1984. Mm -hmm. That's how, how it got its name. Um, I bought it not because it was a cab over. I bought it because it was one at the time. I, the YouTube channel had no, had no idea what it In fact, I was hiding it from the channel. So I should have been vlogging that, but I didn't. The truck met the right price point. It had a recently in mileage rebuilt engine. However, it was a 25-year-old rebuild because it sat for a long long time so the price was right the engine was reasonably fresh and i figured okay it won't take a huge amount to get it on the road obviously basically every piece of rubber had to be replaced the windshield frame on the top was rotted out i had to replace that because the windshield frames are steel the rest of the cab is aluminum yeah so all them peterbilts the horns where that goes through the roof that leaks all the clearance lights on the top they leak over time and that water will drip in and take out that steel windshield frame so bunch of nickel dime stuff like that got it back running i had about i'm thinking maybe six eight months like pulling freight with it regular and then uh it lost a an o-ring where your cylinder liners go into your block and it dropped the coolant into the oil and i was able to limp it home but i uh, use a lot of oil use a lot of water yeah and then i rebuilt it and that's the current engine i'm running right now and you're hauling flatbed yeah it's, i mostly pull rgn now so it's uh, like a flatbed with, uh, you know, it goes up from up from the top of the truck, drops down to a real low deck middle, and then it comes up a little bit over the rear wheels. So I can pull that big oversized, the fire trucks, that kind of thing. Uh, last one, last big one I did was actually a big old garbage truck. But, you know, it works. But we do a lot of the uh, the big striker trucks that Oshkosh trucks make. The, uh, you know, the big ones at the airports are like 10 feet wide. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of them too. So that always looks pretty cool on the back of the truck. I was watching one last week, and you, you were trying you a two lane road going out in the middle of nowhere, some some private. And you were questioning whether you'd actually be able to get the truck in there to, to pick up whatever it was you were going after. Oh yeah, some places we go to are. I think quite you were down in tight. Georgia. You were in Georgia somewhere. Are we talking the one with the railroad grade? Might have been. Yeah, because there there was one we picked up that uh, I was trying to get, I weighed, I picked up the truck and I didn't know how I was on weight. I knew it was good gross, but I didn't know if I was over on an axle. Now that setup, I can't move anything. I can't slide the tandems, they're fixed to the trailer, they don't move. So if they are overweight, you just get a permit for it. You know, it's all of a sudden legal, you pay money. You know, money makes everything work, right? <laughs> So I was trying to get it to the pilot truck stop to be able to weigh it. And that became a problem because rather than make this big fugazi move around to get to where the pilot was i took what i thought were legal truck routes which they were but there was a grade crossing and remember my trailer is my if when it's loaded my trailer is only like three four inches off the ground and it's easy to high center that thing. absolutely and that road just went straight up and then down uh -huh. and no doubt i had a high center that sucker on the rail tracks and i was this was right after the the big wreck in ohio yeah so I named the, it's a little clickbaity, but it's the truth. With what I was weighing, I weighed in at 79,000 pounds, and I actually had it perfect on the axles. But that thing weighed in at 79,000 pounds, and that was a high-speed main I was getting ready to cross. So I had to come backwards off. I didn't never even made the attempt. I pulled up, I saw it, and I backed out and tried to turn around. Of course, the cars were behind me, you know, creating a fit. And I'm like, okay, you want a train wreck in your backyard? This this is enough truck to do it. I think I've shared three or four such incidents in just like the yeah. last three weeks. Yeah, and I even put up on the video the one where that excavator got hung up and got hit by another train. He just took that trailer right apart. That was literally the excavator. Was that the Ringgold? Yeah, uh, I think so. The one in Ringgold was literally 
we lived right in the house around the corner. Yeah, that was that was Ringgold. Right down there near downtown. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, we know that spot specifically. Yes, so I named that video How Easy Is It for a Truck to Wreck a Train? Yeah, I mean, and, I, I, it, it, it kind of did reasonable, and all of a sudden, boom, there went the views. I'm like, okay, they went looking so at I'm it for that reason. Thinking he was, I saw the driver, he was, I think it looked like he was maybe trying to unhook the hose. Was, was he trying to hope to he get his damn get, cab out of the way? Well, those, the one he had, it's hydraulic. So if he can raise the, the bed up hydraulically, he can get it off the tracks and free it. Mine is not hydraulic; it's mechanical. So he, so but whatever he was trying to do, he didn't because he, he saw it, he heard it coming, and he, he was just, trying to rescue it. He ran out in the street to get away. Yeah, so. there's a point where it's like, yep, it's it's done. It's done. You're done. Wow. And of course, the woman in the car. I'm. Just, I think it was. Yeah, a woman. she had sense enough to start backing up. Yeah, yeah, and ca I'll tell you what. Most camera people they forget they're filming and they drop the camera, and you got a good shot of the ground. While meanwhile, the action's <laughs> right in front of you. I'll give her credit because number one, she held the camera steady and strong yeah. through the whole thing. Wow. So the camera person, I'm like, you know, it, you'd be amazed how many shots I've missed just making that exact mistake. So it's like, you know, from doing YouTube and the camera whole, you know, you know, always working with the camera, you got to give that woman credit for keeping that camera straight even after the impact. Yeah, she did good. I mean, and, and even backing up the car. I yeah. Was, but that driver, but that's the other thing. And I, that kind of gets into a subject I wasn't really planning on talking about, but I know in, in well, both my channel, you know, and your radio show, we run into that all the time where it's like everyone wants to, everyone's fast to blame the truck driver. And it's like, this is a trailer. I mean, I've literally been routed over rail tracks that I cannot clear. Like the state with oversized loads, yeah. the state routes you that way. So you're supposed to pull over where there's nowhere to pull over and call the railroad and find out what. What are you going to do, move the track or lower the grade for you? <laughs> yeah. Now you got to wait for the state issue permit. You go out of route, it's illegal. So you're sitting on the side of the road, parking there is illegal. What do you do? How do you do that? And they always find a way to blame the truck driver. Like that big one with that bridge beam. Yeah. That truck, he went around that turn. And what people don't realize is the, the person videotaping had the windows in the car rolled up. So when that truck was rolling through, all you hear faintly in the background is an air horn. That truck was trying to push through an intersection. You make your left, cross the track, and immediately there's a there's, there's a, a stop intersection light. right now. Who exactly. designed something like that? So he has to go through, blow the red light slowly, praying that he can get that whole load, that big long bridge beam, off the tracks for the rail before train gets there. He didn't. So it wasn't a clearance problem. It was the red light stopped him. What do you do? Blow the red light, get hit by a train. Either way, you're wrong. Yeah. So it's like. In the end, he probably would have been better off just pulling out and then just hoping cars are smart enough to stomp on the brake. But even there, someone T-bones that load and gets hurt or killed, that's you. Yeah. But you wrecked the train, and that one got derailed when it hit that. Yes. That train went yes. down. That train completely left well, that, the track. That train was moving. Yeah. So. Uh, the, the one at Ringo was going pretty slow. They got that stop shortly after impact. I guess they must have been trying to stop before they hit him. Oh yeah, he was. He already was in emergency long before. Okay. Long before, because as soon as you, if on a railroad side of it, as soon as you see, like impending danger like that, you just throw that sucker in emergency and it's stopping as hard as it can. Wow. So are you still doing the speed shop thing or are you just pretty much back to driving truck and doing On the, the personal side, I'm trying to clear out some work that I have taken in from the past, but uh, no, we're, we're not taking in any work as far as um, the automotive stuff goes. Now on the personal side of things, well, yeah, I, I still, we still play with our toys, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not, we're not taking any work for that. The channel right now is, just, is it's grown at a point now where I literally, I mean, I have one truck. I'm one driver. I literally had to hire mechanics and a welder just to keep up because I have to do the editing. So like right now, my, my uh, RGN is getting worked on right now as we speak while I have a, re a rental step deck here because I'm doing brakes on it and parts are just taking a little bit long to come in. Okay. So I'm like, you know what, while I'm gone, I'll have Terry take care of that for me and I'll be out here at the truck show. I kind of feel guilty because he's working and <laughs> I guess technically I'm working, but you know how that goes. Right, right. Well, let's get a quick time out here. We'll come back with more right after this, the Steve Summers Overnight Drive. Do you have a Dodge pickup and hate your automatic transmission? And now back to the Steve Summers Overnight Drive, live from the Hot Shot Secret Studios. Talking about all, all these YouTube influencers. I, I was talking to Q Ball during the break there. I had uh, Bruce Wilson on earlier, and he's talking about these you know, 
millions of views and all this stuff that I mean, people are actually kind of almost making a living, I guess, doing social media stuff. Uh, Kyle was telling me about somebody that he knows. I think that Bruce is friends with it. There's uh, some some company that's actually hauling YouTube equipment around the country. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what that was all about. But yeah, I'm not familiar with that either. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, where, where we leave off at? Hey, you 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 were actually what? what are you, how much of the show have you seen? You've been here all weekend. Oh right? yeah, I got here. I got here Wednesday night, and then uh, started walking around as soon as they opened the doors on Thursday. I just been you know milling around, seeing what's what, you know, trying to trying to grow content for the channel, but also try to see what also what else can help me, you know, in my operation because I am trying to grow. I'm trying to put more trucks on, maybe uh, you know just trying to grow my you know my stuff. Really? So we're looking into other other avenues as far as like um, engines and trucks. How to how to get another truck that's old enough to be useful for for me, mm -hmm. but also uh, put drivers in, keep them happy, that kind of thing too. Okay. But I would like to step out a little bit more than just just doing truck driving, you know, know. So <laughs> it's been an interesting show just to see what my options are as far as how to grow. Now what. you were slated. Uh, you know, we, we talked on Thursday. You were slated to be here like 1:30. What the, what the heck was going on out there? You were out in the lot, and who, what, what's out there? Oh yeah. So I got a text, and I'm like, hey, the Green Goblin truck. You know the. This guy built a replica truck from the movie Maximum Overdrive with yeah. that big Western star with that big scary goblin face on, right? With happy toys on a trailer. Yeah. This guy found the exact gear make model of truck, put a 318 Detroit in it with that big scary growl to it, right? So it's the exact replica of the truck and the trailer. So I got a text. I'm like, hey, this guy's parked two spots from where your truck is. So I go out there and I film it, and he, he went... That's where I was running because first off, he was moving the truck so other people could take pictures of it. Then he did the whole lap around the complex. So I grabbed my GoPro and I'm trying to film this. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to run. So I literally started running down like the perimeter road around yeah. here. There I'm running as fast as I, as I can run, holding the camera over my head like this, just like over my shoulder facing backwards. I'm thinking like, oh, I'm on video, you're on radio. So I'm holding the camera facing backwards. Running as fast as I can, a truck just goes right past me. So like the, noise, like the Green Goblin was chasing you kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. It was so cool. Now, that's going to be probably YouTube I hope that's copyrighted YouTube footage, right? Uh, it's mine. Yeah. But I'm not the only one out there filming. So. Yeah. But no, I mean, but that's the thing. So it's like, in fact, we're saying original content, right? And these guys that built that truck, as a matter of fact, the guy that built it, he sold it. So there's a new owner to it now. Um, I, I talked to him, so I was like, I had to wait for them to do the lap around, get his information. I'm like, hey, this is who I am. I'd love to film your truck, new video just on your truck. He's like, hell yeah, let's make it happen. I'm like, all right, what's your number? Change numbers. I'm like, man, I got to be at Steve Summer Show in like 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, and I start running. I'm like, I got to go. I can't be late. I can't be late. I can't be late. I'm like, oh, man, I can't do that to you. And for so the, I came here sweaty. And for the <laughs> listeners out there, yeah, he is truly, you know, when they say cue ball, there ain't a hair there on the head, but he was sweating. You was your, your head was sweating rather profusely. <laughs> oh my God. I ran, I ran from the parking lot literally all the way here. The only time I was, re I literally stopped to rest was when I was on the escalator because there's people in front of me. Okay. Like going up the Skyway and then coming back down the Skyway. But yeah, I was. Oh, I was yeah, you talk about running. I see, I mean, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I presume you're not a smoker because I, I, I couldn't run from here out the back damn door. No, I smoke cigars, but not very often. So, yeah. but I'm not like, I don't have like any. Lung issue from long term smoking. Yeah, but I'm yeah. a, I'm a, I live the and sedentary a, lifestyle of a truck driver. Sorry. You're a bourbon sipper, aren't you? Oh, yeah. That's bourbon, scotch, whiskey. The very, oh, the very first night that I got to come back on the radio <laughs> with the I Steve Summers overnight drinking. drive, you were filming one of your, uh, from, from your living room. Yes. And you were just talking to the people out there and you had my show on the screen there and you, and you were kind of, every once in a while, I could say, yeah, to go, Go check out the Steve Summers overnight drive. This is my old friend here. Right. But you, you were drinking, and <laughs> uh, like hour number one, and then hour number, you, your conversation changed a little bit. You, <laughs> uh, you, you, uh, maybe I should say your communication abilities. No doubt. Gradually was changed. It was funny. You don't. That's why you don't do a show when you're drinking often it's just yeah. it might be funny once. Well, you were just relaxed sitting back at your feet propped up well exactly i was at my house sitting yeah, on the couch yeah. just chilling you know because i had the youtube at the time on the on the tv and i got a pretty good sized television set so i had you on the tv and i think i had my camera propped up on like a tripod and a 
I don't even know what I had the camera held up on so, doing the so live. So it's like you could see the, the screen of my show and then you as well. Yeah. It. So you're talking to the drivers out there, talking trucking stuff and all that. Yeah, yeah. so anybody wants to find that. Were that's... you taking questions from people or something? Yeah. People, yeah, that's what I thought. People are talking or texting messages or something. Yeah, because on, uh, on, when, when you do a live on YouTube, people can. And that's the, well, one reason I'd like to do lives is you can directly communicate with your audience. So, like, they'll they'll write a comment, and it comes up to you live, like, instant chat. So you can't write back. You just speak it. Yeah. So you, I, I'll, I'll read the question uh -huh. or comment, and then I'll reply to it, you know, just same, same like I'm talking to you, and that's what I was doing. But that's in one of my live videos. So if you go back, what was it, two, three years January ago? January 11th of 2021. To go to my lives. <laughs> that, was know, the, that was the first show we came back, yeah, January so you, 11th. Yeah, so if you go to where on, on YouTube, you click on a channel, hit in, where it says videos, shorts, lives, click on live and scroll down, 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 and you'll find I have no idea what I titled it, but it's in there somewhere. Yeah, uh, that, that's pretty cool. But yeah, that was my first night back, and I don't know. How did you find me? Were you, were you a Facebook friend or something? How did oh, you know yeah. where I was going to be? Oh, yeah. We were f friends on Facebook for many, many years. Okay. You don't post a whole lot on Facebook. Um, there was a time where I decided, um, well, let's just say around the, around the time where you had troubles with mm -hmm. your former employer, about that time, everybody else with an opinion uh, was taken off. So it was like, you know what? All I'm doing is making enemies of friends I used to have. And I literally lost friends of mine over posts on Facebook. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done with it. This yeah. is stupid. So yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm not even posting no more. Well, I used I used to get off work and you know, go home and get on Facebook and then sit there and of course have a you know a skull buster and then another and the lo the, the more you have the more angry you get and the more fights you get on oh, and, yeah. you're t and you don't win arguments at, at the keyboard no. on Facebook. It's just then you know, then you go back later and say, oh man, that, I don't remember posting that, but man, that's <laughs> that was stupid. Delete, delete. Yeah, see, it's too late, a, but it's out there, you know? See, to me, that shouldn't be a problem, but it leads to problems because people are just, <laughs> I feel, too sensitive. Yeah. But it is uh, what it is. That's the role we we, we got to hit our news break here, but if you want to stick around, we got another hour. You got to head here, final hour of the Mid America Truck Show. It's coming. Crisp fall mornings turn bitter cold. Thank you. We watch. Thank you much. Oh, one of my shirts. Hey, yeah, I've been looking for you. What's going on, brother? I know that I've seen the overdrive right here on the shirt, brother. I'll watch this. All righty, here we go, final hour. Can you believe it? We've almost made it. One more time around. My job is done. Yeah, Miller time, one hour from now here, Q-Ball. Sounds good. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I don't know. Some people say, whoever wrote the press release for me said, Steve Summers says when he's in the middle of a truck show, he's really in his element. I'm like, who in the hell said that? said, I am so out of my element. I, I get nervous when I come down here. I, you? I I broadcast from in a secret bunker. I'm in my studio. You know, I'm all about it. being out in public. I get nervous for some reason. I don't know why. Really? But yeah, once I got to th Thursday, I was really nervous. And then yeah, I've settled in a little bit. And I'm good, we're good to go. Final hour coming up here. But yeah, anybody that knows me well knows. Oh, Steve always gets, he gets all like, anxiety attacked, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> I, I can kind of relate because when I first started the channel, um, it's hard to just talk to a camera and, and put it out there. And then you don't realize that people are watching that. And you do start to stutter and stammer and try to figure it out. And it does take time to get through that. But yeah, it's like it, it does take time to get used to it. But I can see how you feel a little bit on edge, just the amount of people, I guess it's different, but nonetheless, if you literally just put your, if you wrapped this little section here in walls and it was just me and you, yeah, it's the same thing. It is, yeah. There's nothing different. Yeah, we're in the zoo, like, everybody's like, look at that baboon, you know? <laughs> that's, all right. that's all right, though. I mean, heck, you know, what are you going to do? But, even, but in here, though, that's different from being just on radio in your secret bunker there where your fans come up right to you, like right here next to us. Yeah. This guy's got my shirt on, and I'm like, hey, what's up? That's, yeah, that's FSC, people that there. FSC, that's, there you go. 
He, he's a YouTube influencer, people that watch your show, right? And I sell that shirt exactly because with that color, a lot of the places we deliver to, you have to have like that highlighter color for, you know, high vis vests and all that. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just get that color in a t-shirt, put my logo on it, and put it out there and, and sell them out. So, and that, that they do sell, obviously. I bet like, you, wow. I, you probably have more listeners or viewers than I do. I mean, you know, it's, uh, we're only on Facebook. I, I got kicked off YouTube, you know. So well, everybody talks uh, subscribers, but subscribers really in the YouTube world, subscribers don't pay the bills because I could tell you to subscribe and maybe you do, but if you don't watch, it doesn't help. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of people okay. that watch that don't subscribe for whatever reason. Yeah. So in any end, it's amount of people watching and it's how many ads they watch, how many ads come up while they're watching your your stuff, you know. Now so, when I'm watching something and it, you know the ad starts and it's you know, five seconds. It, in four seconds, in, you only watch 10 seconds of it and you skip. Do, do they get credit for watching that once you hit the skip ad thing? Or Yeah, they're, well, skippable ads, It you get less money if they skip. If they don't skip, you get more money for it. But you're talking in the penny. You're talking like quarter pennies. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, it's like a quarter a cent. But add that up to how many, you know, you have a, a, a video that might go, you know, 900,000 people watch that video. You know, those quarter cents add up. All right, yeah. So what what about these ads that come up that might be uh, like a 20-minute infomercial? Do, does anybody want to do those damn things? Um, If they're sleeping, maybe. Okay. Because I'll be honest with you, what I do at home is, like, I keep up with, I can't keep up with everybody, and I always feel bad because I'm like, if I want to keep up with, say, uh, like, like James Pretty, for example, he's another one. He works on trucks. Like, he doesn't drive them. Like, he's not a professional truck driver, but he has, like, but 13, 14 trucks he's got now. God bless his wife. She lets him park all that stuff in the driveway. But uh, but he, his channel is working on the trucks, right? But I'll watch his content, and that's, you know, where am I going with this? I'll watch his content, but then I'll also watch others. So it depends on, I'll be I'm in the living room, mm -hmm. and I've been known to just have a couple skull busters and a, <laughs> a couple sips of bourbon or uh, some scotch or whatever, and then night night out. Yeah. So th there's no skipping ads. Yeah. And it will play the next just keep video, playing and keep playing. So, so, so some, somebody's getting credit for being viewed then. Yeah, so the Skullbuster's watching the video. I'm out yeah. cold on the couch. <laughs> That's, That's cool. happened many, many times. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? We've talked a lot about I want to get to some of the, uh, some of the other guys. You, you mentioned Gentry. They had the fire there a few a few weeks or months ago. Yeah. You you used hot shots. You, you've called before and oh, you yeah. talked about you. You are another one of those that are very, very skeptical about snake oils, and there's, there's tons of stuff probably in this venue right now that says it does something that maybe not necessarily does. See, what sold me with, with Hot Shot Secrets is, um, I always can't get his name right, Chris, Chris Gabrelchik. Gabrelchik. Yeah. So when he gets on there, and he is not a promoter, so to speak, he's the guy that in, like he's the inv he's the mad scientist in the back room. He's a tribologist, correct? Right. Yep. That's the word. That's the <laughs> But when he explains what what the product does, and he got into the details of those Navistar slash Ford injectors, yep. And how it now most that, that's the thing when he speaks, I'm listening. It's hard to get the average person to understand when he gets into the detail of um, what do they call them H pop injectors, where there's an oil. The plunger gets oil pushed, side, yep. and then there's the oil that they use the oil to push another piston, actually make the injector inject fuel, and that crap gets all gummed up in there because of the oil, not the fuel, the oil. Um, a lot of a lot of guys know the the, the MDS system. Well, Ram calls them MDS, and like the multiple displacement systems. Mm -hmm. GM with the with the lifters, same problem in the GM lifters. There's a myriad of these things where the oil just gets hot, old, and sticky. And in, uh, even on, even in my truck, the biggest thing you're going to have, because I don't have an H-pop injector, it's a B-model CAT, so it's direct injection on the pump. But the turbo, the bearings in the turbo, that's there's no way to make that not get hot. So, and there's a noticeable difference. Just take, and that's where the stick chin illuminator came yeah, into play. There's a noticeable he developed difference right it for that. The funny thing, Chris, was, he, Chris went back home yesterday afternoon. Was, uh, I wish you could have got a I came by did, yesterday. You then. didn't get to meet him? No. Okay, yeah. Sad. So anyway, he was explaining the fact that you know he had developed this for international, and then international yep. they got to where well all these trucks were going out of warranty, and eh, we're not going to buy your product. Right. You know? So he decided to just take it to the market himself, 
and he was trying to sell it and trying to sell it. And he said, well, I'd sell a bottle here, or a bottle there. And when he came into our program and sat down and told what it exactly. did and how it did it, all of a sudden people like you understood what he was right. saying. It's, a, it's getting the message across what it does and all of a sudden people started buying and then the, the rest is kind of history. You exactly. Know? And it grew into what it is now, but that was the thing. You built a product, but you had to figure out how to how to market it. It wasn't. It literally was not snake oil. It was just how do you market it to where the mass audience understands what the doing. technical details of what it was doing. So the, the term stiction, that's a... That's a good one, yeah. but it's, what was it? There was another one my father and my son came out with, go, uh, like gooified. 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 That's like a slush mixture, yeah. right? And then another one, uh, same thing in the industry. I don't know who invented the term rust jacking, where like on your brake linings, right? Where the rust will break, will, it, well, even with frames, older, older trucks, especially where that rust will, um, it will push metal apart. Yeah. You'd be amazed how strong that stuff can be. So yeah, stiction, that's one of those made up terms that actually makes perfect sense. You just had to come up with a good term. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so well, that's like you said, yeah, the rest is history. And now, I mean, to this day, I mean, originally it wasn't about uh, the stiction. Yes, the turbos is the one that he says is really bad because the heat that is generated in those turbos yep. builds up that, how did he explain it? It's like a, a skillet where you put butter in the skillet to make a grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, there's this brown solid you can't get it off you're, right you're trying to rub it but if you put stiction eliminator on that it would just melt away it would just oh, yeah. like dissolve you know so you could tell the difference just take the take the intake side of your turbo off you know in my case it's a big big air tube coming from your air cleaner stick your hand at turbo and spin it and you can tell a, a turbo brand new and it spins really good and a one that's been you know older one it, it'll still spin good but it doesn't spin as free right run hot shot secrets through it and you can tell the difference. And I, I don't know how good way to like tell, like put a gauge on it, but it's like you could just stick your hand in there and tell, spin it. Yeah. But before and after, if you own the truck and you know it, you'll you'll tell. Just just spin your turbine in your turbo by hand. You'll so know by it. listening to Chris, then in other words, he convinced you, I guess, what to try their product. Did did you ever have a, a vehicle with failing injectors or what they said were failing? Not that not that problem. But like I said, my big thing with my truck is the is the turbo. Just the, 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 the turbo. Okay. The freer the turbo spins, the more boost it makes. The more boost it makes, the more power it makes. Okay. Okay. And that's it. Spools up quicker. Just gets the you know gets it going quicker. But yeah, but what you guys managed to do, and that's where you came in, and I'll give you a lot of credit with that, is again how to market that. Well, you were the influencer that got that done. That was all you. <laughs> you put it out there. <laughs> that's good. And Chris kind of credits me with that. And you know what? That's, that's kind of why I'm sitting here today. So Yeah, look at it now. But I mean, I've, got, gotta... I've, I've got to give him a return on investment, though. That's, that's what it's all about. Right. That's what we're trying to do here. You know, he's been investing in me. Now we're trying to get the word out and get a return on investment. No keep doubt this about thing it. Going. He's, he's really putting it balls to the wall to get this thing growing. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So Gentry and Sons, that's uh, buddies of yours, right? Yeah, Tim's a good close friend of mine. Uh, we actually started talking because of the YouTube channel. In fact, my channel is influenced is what influenced him to start the channel. He's always been Tim Gentry. Don't get me wrong, but to put it out on YouTube, he saw me with my old cab over, and he's like, "I can do that too." So yeah. he, that's when he started his channel, and he bought the Air Force cab over off of Bruce Wilson, and that's how he started his channel. Was that, and then he brought the channel into his daily life as far as him, his family, his trucking operation. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, see about a, probably about a year ago, you, you called me and, uh, you told me about Gentry and you got him to call the program one time. Right. Uh, was it Tim that called? Yeah. So Tim calls and I, I told him, I said, I'm, I'm, I I got to get Kyle hooked up with you. Right. Well, I, I called Kyle and I tell him about, well, there's this YouTube guy and he's, you know, he says, ah, oh, they're a dime a dozen. Everybody's a YouTube. I don't think Kyle contacted him. But Kyle has somehow since then, he was telling me uh, yesterday or day before that all of a sudden we're going to be working more with Gentry and right. Sons. So I give him a, I'm not sure what came, uh, how that came about, but well, yeah, when that we're, we're going to be tied in with them some way. Well, when, when that happened, I was in New Jersey moving my parents, like they already left for Texas. Me and Jen were already at my mom's house 
loading everything in our trailer to take it to Texas. We were emptying out the house for him so he could sell it. That, that's why I couldn't be here because I had to deal with that. Tim was running around doing his thing here in, in the show. Mm -hmm. But and I was trying to get a hold of you via email. And internet in here is terrible during the show. Yep. There's so yep. many phones in here. So there's the internet's terrible. So I was trying to get a hold of you and say, hey, get a hold of Tim. He can come down, you know, do an interview with him. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. <laughs> and then last minute, I finally got through to Tim. I think I, and I got him to call in. I think it was, I think it was after the show when he finally did call in. Yeah, yeah it was after the show. Okay. But yeah, that's how that played out. And then he had that big fire recently. Too. Yeah, how's, how's things going? I mean, I assume they had insurance, but I mean, uh, but he lost a lot of trucks and it takes time to get things. I mean, it was, you got an update? The thing with insurance is it's something you need to have to be able to operate. It's almost, I'm not going to call it a Ponzi scheme, but it's damn close. It's something you have to have, to, my closer extortion, you have to have it to operate, but then when you want it to pay out if you need it, good luck. Yeah. So in that, in the case with that fire, there were a few vehicles that were insured privately because they weren't his. Um, and I'll talk about it because he already discussed it on his channel. One was his brother's Mustang that his mother left him when she passed. Uh, that car, that meant a lot to him. That car was insured. And there was a Duramax in the, in the, in the shop. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's really weird. He will lose money if he claims anything on it. Wow. So it's like he has to eat it. So all the trucks that were in the back behind the building that burned down, those were off the road. Those were for either parts or to be fixed on. I mean, on that, that impacted a number. He had a number of drivers, right? And so uh, have they he been able to get them back on the road? Or? He didn't lose any road, any road trucks. Okay. Um, the, one of the, one of the uh, channel favorites, Rooster, that's a 379 Pete. Um, that was ne right next to the building. And one of the firefighters tried really hard to keep Rooster wet while they were putting the fire out to save that truck. Other trucks were dragged, literally dragged away, like on that video that Tim put out. He has this big old, I think it's a case tractor. It's an articulated tractor, like a farm tractor. Mm -hmm. And it dragged a few trucks away from the building. So they were trying to get as many out of there as they can. That's what, that's what saved them was the fact they were able to get that done. But the building was a total loss. All the tools gone. The engine for Rooster was a built, like a big strap and big Caterpillar crack block from, because it got real hot, hit with water. She cracked right over it. Wow. And it was it was empty too. There's no oil, no water in it, no nothing. So mm. they lost um, another fan favorite. They had they, that they did lose was uh, the truck they called Old Yeller, or Old Yeller. It was a uh, yellow cab over a Freightliner. Nothing left of it. The cab was gone. It's all aluminum. Gone. Just so, it, so were, frame the, and an engine. were these all trucks that you know Tim kind of does something like what you do with YouTube videos? These were all the trucks that were used in various YouTube. On the channel videos. side, the, yeah, on the channel side, the biggest loss was the yellow cab over. Like wow. he's got, you see him running around with a shirt that says R.I.P. Old Yeller. That's his shirt that he did with after that truck okay. burned down. Okay. Like there's nothing left of that. Uh, correction, the engine was salvaged. Okay. I had, had to put all new gaskets in it. The engine somehow survived. It's still, that one is still salvaged. Okay. I think he's going to put that in a dump truck. That's the only way. But yes, a lot of YouTube content got lost in there. So a lot of a lot of trucks that they were working on, like uh, he was working on a truck for Weston Chaplin that went up to SH Tube in Kentucky to, to start getting finished because the shop's done, it's mm -hmm. gone. So he's he's gonna looking at either getting another place, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna build his own on another piece of property that he did buy years prior to the fire. Okay. But he, the good side of it though is, in a weird way, the fire was almost a blessing in disguise, meaning it. They as a family, because they're a family unit, they're real tight. Um, Tim has other kids that somewhat show up on a channel. Braxton, he's he's the boy that's, he he eats, sleeps, breathes trucks, this kid. And he, I mean, he moves them around on the property, trucks, trailers, he does, he does everything. Mm -hmm. But as a family, I think they started getting a little, I'm not gonna say complacent, but the, you know, running a trucking company, doing the YouTube channel, the fire after it was all said and done, it really motivated them to start, you know what, we're going to do bigger and better. And it literally it lit a fire out of their ass. Okay. And I'm, I'm, they're growing huge just from the added content from working more with other, like, like getting out of their comfort zone. I had to do that too. I hit, where, I hit a wall where I had to start growing or I'm just going to sit in the exact same spot. I think they did the same thing too, and it just took the fire to do it. I mean, they lost a lot, don't get me wrong, but motivation. 
it picked up a lot. Okay. They're doing awesome right now. But the fans really stepped up on that one, too. That's good. Okay. So how's mom and them, as they say? Mom is, well, both of them. I think are you said good. they were going to. They were in Wisconsin. Did you say they're getting out of Wisconsin? Backwards. You're in oh, Wisconsin? My yes. I'm in Wisconsin. I yep. live, so my, my home and my shop is not that far from Green Bay and Appleton. My parents, they lived in the house that I grew up in in New Jersey. Okay. Until, you, you said at some point they were getting the hell out of New yeah, Jersey left, or something. Yeah, they went for Texas. They're out. Okay. They're okay. So in the end, the lockdowns created more of a health problem for my parents than anything else. Did. So... They almost died from medical neglect. Wow. So they moved it. Once they finally started getting their health a little bit better, they decided, you know what? We're never, ever, ever having this happen again. And they said, you know, we're out of here. Yep. So they, I, I have a couple of uncles and cousins that I speak to every now and again in Jersey. My family is, is not there anymore. So they're in Texas now. That's a good thing. So Wisconsin, man, it's, it's been a snowy winter up there, hasn't it? Uh, on and off. It really wasn't that snowy until late. Now it's been snowing. I think yeah. it's snowing again now. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, next week there's another big spring winter storm supposed to be brewing. Oh, That's brother. what they tell us. Yeah, yeah. It's... I've had enough. I'm trying to figure out how to move to Florida and get that done, but <laughs> the company I'm leased onto is based out of Wisconsin. There's not much yeah. I can do about it. And they, uh, you know, they, uh, they work with me with the YouTube channel and the trucks, and they don't give me any gripe about it. So... I, and I do well with them, so I'm not leaving the, you know, why, why would you leave something you're, you do good with? Yeah. You know, exactly. So for, I mean, obviously our listeners, they all know you as Q-Ball on the radio. How did they, how did they get hooked up with your, like, your, your YouTube channel and, you know, view what you got going on, the stuff you're sharing? Oh, the YouTube channel, the YouTube channel is simply FSC Trucking, short for Fest Check Speed Custom. So Foxtrot, Sierra, Charlie. And FSC then trucking. trucking. And there you go. You see a big old picture of, of uh, Cab Over rolling coal through Chicago. That's hey, the channel banner. You'll see the guy that has a, a cue ball. Ball is a... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you had one video. we got like a couple minutes I want to try to fill to get to the bottom of the hour. And I think we've got the... you familiar with Big Rig Coffee Company? Oh, uh, no. No? <laughs> okay. I thought I thought you were going a different direction with that one. Yeah, I, but no, not, not a coffee company. Big no. Rig Coffee Company. That's supposed to be... Uh, Misty Big Rig, you familiar with her? No, uh, she's supposed to be a YouTube influencer too. So yeah, see, that's the thing. It sounds dumb, but like I try to keep up with people that I know, and I sometimes don't run into people like other people until I li literally walk into them. Yeah. Or like talk to them in person, or somebody will say on one of my comments, "Hey, you should check this out." Then eventually I'll get over there and do it. And I, I've met a few of them. I've met a few other influencers around here that I never even heard of. Um, and some of them that were really big, and I just ran into them. And some of them don't even know who I am. So I'm like, okay. I like to cross promote with other influencers if I can. Yeah. It's, that's the best way to grow. And I, I'm the one that believes that everybody, even if we're all in trucking, no channel is exactly the same. And I don't look at it like a competition. Mm -hmm. I don't compete with Gentry. We work together. I don't compete with Bruce Wilson. We work together. I've never done a collab with Bruce Wilson, but I wouldn't mind doing it. We don't compete. That's my view of it. We exist in the same space. We do our own different things, but it's in the same realm. It's not uh, Ford versus Chevy versus Dodge. Yeah, so to speak. Yeah. I, I don't look. Some guys do. I don't look at it that way. So I'm always looking to grow and help others grow as well. In about two minutes, can you tell the story of you, sh you shared a video? I think it was something uh, entitled about the truck stop idiot or something. You, you, it was like a 30 minute bit, but you're, you're, driving you get there to the truck stop and you're trying to back in and there's this jackass like hauling ass through the parking lot not even stopping to let you back into your space Do you remember that one? Oh yeah 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 that was not that was in uh that was in georgia so yeah it was just one of those things where i'm trying to get back in i'm sight siding in and this guy comes from directly behind me and as i'm trying to swing the track i'm trying to figure out how i can explain it i'm trying to get back under my trailer okay so I've already cut it in. It's backing in. So now I'm going from from a from a um, turning the wheel to the left to try to get back under my trailer. So I get the truck straight with the trailer. And as I'm coming around, this guy just comes ripping right by, almost yeah, in the truck. Right. And he had no idea. That's the best way. He had no idea. I had not one, but two, but three cameras running it at the same time. It was all caught. Yeah. Caught them all on video. And I'm like, you know what? 
Gotcha. That's a jackass or dumbass of the week nominee. Exactly. So, but, but you know they what? do that stuff in the parking lots all the time, they do right? Stuff all the time. You have no idea what you're going to run into. That's the thing with, with with my channel. You don't know what you're going to run into until it happens. I can't pre-plan that stuff. It's just there. So if somebody does some stupid stunt in a parking lot, or uh, I just happen to be sitting in a truck stop and a guy's putting new door signs on his truck, or covering up old door, door yeah. signs right in the middle of the parking lot, not even not even parked, or somebody parks a wrecked truck at the Loves or something like that, I catch it on camera, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to put it out there. I'm not trying to be necessarily yep. negative, but that's the crap we deal with. That's the reality of trucking, and that's what my channel puts out there. That could be the next viral video. All right, Clock says, I, I thank you so much for hanging. It's great to meet you in person, Q-Ball, and I'll be, we'll be listening for your voice on the radio. Awesome. We'll return after this, the Steve Summers Overnight Drive. I think that GoPro crapped out, which is why they're so unreliable. <laughs> this poor guy's just waiting and waiting. Oh man, that was cool. 